Brooks Running has a new shoe for you runners out there. Did you hear that? Better turn up your volume. In fact, turn it up to the max. Introducing the all-new Ghost Max. It's got all kinds of things to make your knees and ankles feel protected, like Max Cushion, Max Soft Landings with DNA Loft V2 Foam, and Max Smooth Rides with their Glide Roll Rocker. Feel better on your run with Ghost Max. Learn more at brooksrunning.com. Vaginas are absolute magic, and Ollie is here to give them the respect they deserve. That means shame-free supplements made with clinically studied ingredients to keep your pH in check and your pleasure a priority. Put yourself on top. Go to Ollie.com today. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. You're listening to the Food Heals Podcast. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put down the Ben and Jerry's, get off the couch, and take a walk outside. If you experience any of these symptoms, tell your Facebook friends immediately. All right, welcome, Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining me. I'm Allison Melody. How might psychedelics, also known as plant medicine, revolutionize our approach to mental health by offering swift healing for lifetime trauma and PTSD for people in traumatic jobs, such as police officers and first responders, without the need for prolonged traditional therapy? And what are the legal ramifications of growing and consuming plant medicine? Asking questions like these is what led to this three-part series on Food Heals, where we're covering how plant medicine can help us all heal. In this series, you're hearing brand new interviews with leading experts in the field of psychedelics who all share their personal healing journey, as well as how you can access the power of plants to heal yourself as well. Maybe you heard our last interview with Derek, the founder of Pachamama Sanctuary, and you are ready to try your own ayahuasca retreat or perhaps you want to grow plant medicine at home like Paul taught us how to do in the first episode in this series, or perhaps you'll be inspired by today's guest, current clothing designer and former police officer Nick Moticha, who healed himself of 15 years of job-related trauma in one plant medicine healing session. Nick Moticha was a police officer who was suffering from trauma and PTSD. Traditional therapies didn't work, so he decided to explore plant medicine. In a breakthrough session, he processed 15 years of trauma in one day, shifting from severe PTSD to no longer meeting the criteria for a diagnosis. His mind was absolutely blown. After that experience, Nick decided to resign from law enforcement and realign his life with his values, and he went on to found a clothing company, Flow State Designs. Flow State Designs isn't just about clothes, it's a lifestyle. Nick focuses on using the best textiles made by workers earning fair wages in Canada, minimizing environmental impact, and his hope is the brand enhances all of our well-being and helps individuals find their unique flow in life. It's a great story, Food Heals Nation. I know it will inspire you. So let's dive right in. Roll it, Roxy. The Food Heals Podcast starts now. He is the founder of Flow State Design. Please welcome Nick Motichka to the show. Welcome, Nick. Thank you very much for having me. I'm so glad to have you and take us back to your story because I can relate to this. You were searching for locally made clothing that would be good for you, good for the environment, good for the planet. Also, how about fashionable? That would be nice, right? Like we don't need all these clothes that are so ugly because they're sustainable. Like let's get some fashion and style in here. But you realize it didn't exist at the time. So take me through the origin story of how Flow State Design started. Perfect. Yeah. So in early 2020, so January of that year, um, I was looking for a locally made natural fiber, good fitting 
basic men's t-shirt and I couldn't find it. I could find some brands that would check one of those boxes. They'd be, you know, a nice shirt, but it'd be made with polyester and made in Bangladesh or another right. company would be everything else was good, but it still was um, made with polyester. And so I just couldn't find every or a shirt that would check all of those boxes. So I decided one day early in 2020 to just make it myself. And so um, what was happening in my life at that point was I was uh, a police officer with the Calgary Police Service. So Calgary is a city in Cal or in Canada that's a little over a million people, about 1.2 million people. And uh -huh. so I'd been a police officer there for a little over 10 years at that point. And I was struggling for the first time in my life. And I what that looked like for me was uh, my sleep had really deteriorated to the point where I couldn't sleep anymore in between my night shifts. And I was working mm -hmm. in a, what was called the gang suppression team at that point. And so we were working a lot of night shifts. And so it was 12, four 12 hour nights in a row. And then, uh, and then a set of shifts off or days off, sorry. And so wow. I wasn't able to sleep anymore in between those night shifts more than a couple, three hours. And so that was compounding by the end of my set. And I was just, I was no good at work. I was no good at home. It would take me two days to even feel human again after my, my set of shifts were over. And so I admitted <laughs> that something was wrong with me for the first time. And, um, at that point too, I'd made some major lifestyle changes. So none of this is a coincidence, of course. So I'd of course. <laughs> uh, done a, a major diet change. So my wife and I started a, a gut reset, a 30 day gut reset, uh, January one of 2020. And so diet change, and then we started meditating as well. So there was a lot of other things going on in the background as well. And that at that point, I just, I was feeling so not, good at that point that um, I went to my family doctor and admitted and told him what was going on with me with my sleep. And that resulted in a doctor's note from him restricting my hours to midnight. And as you can imagine in policing, that's um, a little bit career limiting. <laughs> and so I, but I was feeling bad enough that I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to put this note in and just kind of for the first time, just let go of my grasp on control of my life and just sort of let things happen how they were supposed to. And so that's what I did. And things unfolded rapidly from that point. Wow. Okay. So this is interesting. Something that we talk about a lot on Food Heals, just to go back to the sleep factor, is that, yes, we need to get enough sleep. And people take that for granted. But when you're dealing with, you had trauma, you were clinically diagnosed with severe PTSD, and then you're not sleeping. Talk to me about the toll that that takes on your body, because I think we don't actually understand unless we're deep in it, the toll that lack of sleep has on the body. Yeah, absolutely. And I didn't have a lot of insight or awareness into what was happening with me at that point. But mm -hmm. uh, what it felt like was just, I was just a walking zombie. I wasn't patient with my kids. I wasn't the, so I wasn't the dad I knew I could be. I certainly wasn't the husband I knew I could be, the friend, the, all the things. And so it resulted um, in me not, I had a really hard time making decisions. So like at work, you're constantly in policing, having to make these, you know, kind of life or death situation decisions. And so um, by the time I'd get home, I was just like, I couldn't even suggest what we would have for supper kind of thing. Like it was just, I couldn't, couldn't do it. And then I was very, very adverse to any sort of violence at that point. So I couldn't watch anything on TV I, with any sort of violence at all. I couldn't listen to music that had any sort of aggressive lyrics and, um, as time went on, I ended up losing about, it was about 30, close to 30 pounds. And so I'm about six, three, and I was, I was sort of hovered around 195 sort of pounds. And I went down to about 168. And so, um, yeah, lost a bunch of weight and not in a healthy way. I was just basically a, a shell of myself. And it was a combination of, while well, the unresolved trauma that was living in my body, 
um, combined with the, you know, the lack of sleep. And then also being now looking at it with some hindsight, being out of alignment to um, that the job law enforcement was, was not in alignment for me and hadn't been for a long time, but I didn't see a way out of it. And so I just pushed through. So how did you get yourself out of that position? And then how did you discover plant medicine? Okay. So there's a little bit of background here before I kind of get into that. So um, I was yeah, always in these really forward facing positions throughout my career. Um, I'd done undercover drug work, worked, you know, downtown in a major met- metropolitan center as a police officer. I worked in another drug unit in the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, uh, who I worked for prior to joining Calgary Police. So I'd done some some very forward facing things. And so um, this role that I ended up in after I put in that doctor's note restricting my hours was the first time I was not on the front lines. And so I thought, I I thought I had it made at that point. I was working from home because it was May of 2020. And, um, that was the option that was given to us was to be able to work from home. And I was able to get sleep back kind of regulated, not working shift work. And I was working Tuesday to Friday. So it was, I thought I had life really well at that point or really good. And then at the end of June of 2020, George Floyd was murdered by a police officer in the United States. And Mm -hmm. all of a sudden my cushy online gig became just the worst place to be. I would have way rather have been in a, you know, dark alley getting into a drug dealer's car about to buy an ounce of meth rather than deal with everything that was going on during that summer of 2020. And so um, I didn't have a lot of insight into it at all. Again, at this point, uh, I just pushed through that summer, knew it was dark and knew I wasn't enjoying it, but I didn't see a way out at all. I had signed up for this career thinking, all right, once I signed up, I was in it, right? For 25 years until I could potentially retire at that point. And so I was just, I was just pushing through. Um, And then on the morning of September 16th, 2020, I opened my laptop and um, messages had come in overnight through the CPS Facebook page. And I was the first one to see these messages because they're obviously not monitored outside of regular hours. And I read some of these messages and they were a cry for help from this young lady who was suicidal. And mm. I, my whole world for the first time in my career and, and in my life in general came crashing in on me. And I was went into this kind of frozen catatonic like state where I was just staring blankly at my computer screen. I had thoughts of what I needed to be doing as a police officer, but at the same time I was unable to do anything. And I don't know how long I was in that state for, uh, but my wife eventually came into the room and was able to kind of snap me out of it. And Mm -hmm. I then in the, in the moments that followed and in the later that day, I, I, ended up calling my supervisor and I broke down and cried for the first time as an adult on the phone to this uh, civilian lady who was my boss at that point. So I'm trying to explain to her what's going on with me and which was quite difficult because I had no idea at this point what was going on with me. But um, I I went and I knew I needed to be in nature. So that's exactly what I did. I, I drove out west of Calgary into the mountains And I spent the day on the banks of the Elbow River right by a waterfall. And I just sort of got my life straight in my head and what my priorities were. And I knew that I wasn't going to go back to work until I had processed all of the traumas that I'd collected during my career. So there's, for me, there was about five kind of major incidents that I knew I'd never processed. I, Whenever they would come up, I'd be reminded of them with a smell or a location or a sound or any other number of ways. I would yeah. be reminded of them. I would go there very, very briefly and be like, well, no, not, not going to deal with that one today. And I would just push it back down. And that was yeah. my coping strategy to deal with trauma for yeah. at this point I was had been a police officer fi- for 15 years and so I knew that that coping strategy and I'm using like air quotes around the that being a coping strategy because it's not sustainable obviously and it had run its course and my cup 
had simply filled up that day. And I knew that it was time to actually go in and process these traumas. And so I set off on a path and very unknown path of healing, not knowing what that was going to look like. I just went into full surrender mode and just, um, just went with whatever was presented to me. So the, the police service I was working for offered me obviously psychologists. And so I was talking to various different psychologists, trying to find one that really, uh, we, you know, had a, a good rapport, I had a good rapport with, and I really struggled with finding someone who had any sort of a spiritual or energetic component to the healing. Um, and that was something that I was really missing. So going back to kind of that early January of 2020, my spiritual journey had really begun and then had accelerated through. And now we were into September of, of the same year. So about nine months later. And so I was missing that spiritual component big time and was doing all the traditional therapies, uh, doing, you know, exposure therapies and just traditional talk therapy and was doing the eye movement desensitization treatments and nothing was getting me back to myself. And I had an intuitive knowing around, it was close to a year in um, of these traditional therapies. And that's when I had this knowing that there was something in plant medicine for me and as yeah. you can imagine, I had been to lots of doctors at this point and they all wanted or offered to prescribe me different medications for anxiety and for sleep and for all the different things. And I just wasn't interested at all. I just yeah. knew that I was going to stick with nature. And um, yeah, so I started like any good drug cop would do. I just started growing my own mushrooms. Um, so I, uh, <laughs> sorry, like any good drug cop would do, you like knew how to do that. I'm very impressed. <laughs> I, I actually didn't know how to do it exactly. I, uh, I learned on the internet, but I was, a, okay, okay. I was a quick study. So, um, right. yeah, I, I grew, so I started growing psilocybin and what I did was I grew them on a sacred geometry clearing plate and I was doing Reiki on them regularly. And I was just putting in the intention of healing into these into this medicine and mm. i when i say medicine i mean that very sincerely this psilocybin magic mushrooms are a hundred percent medicine and in my opinion yeah. there's no other reason for them to be here other than to help us and help us transcend our you know regular states of consciousness in order to heal and so I started yeah. growing these things and I didn't know what I was going to do with them. I didn't know exactly what that was going to look like or, or what was going to happen. But I also knew that I wasn't going to go down the pharmaceutical road. And so right. um, WCB at that point had put me in this program and it was called the return to work program. And it was four appointments a week with these two different professionals. One was a psychologist and one was an occupational therapist and their goal like the title of the program, Return to Work, their goal mm -hmm. was to get me off of WCB's books. And that was it. And I felt that in every session and they were pushing me really hard. And I was at like a real low point in my mental health at that point. And uh -huh. they, uh, they actually traumatized me more than basically anything that I'd experienced in policing. And so wow. at the end of that program, I was given basically an ultimatum that it was like time to go back to work or resign. And at that point I found, um, well, I'll go back a little bit. So my wife, who's also, I call her my Oracle because she is, she had told Your me Oracle. a couple of months before that what I needed was a shaman who is also a psychologist. And oh. I kind of, I, it didn't really land for me at the time. I was like, I don't know, like, is that really even a thing? And so it took a couple of months and then I was at the point where I'm like, okay, I need a shaman who's also a psychologist. And like <laughs> I have done in the past, I convinced myself that it's my own idea, but of course it, it wasn't. It was definitely my wife's idea. And so uh -huh. I was in this real low point with my back up against the wall. And so I Googled it. I Googled shaman psychologist and I found one and she happened to be in Calgary, in the city that I policed in. And so um, I called her up in that moment and there was a bit of back and forth uh, before she told me that she was going to be able to help me. 
And, Uh um, but she eventually did. And so being a psychologist, she did all the standard testing on me and everything through the DSM and all the, you know, standardized stuff that psychologists do. And I came Uh back as PTSD and on the severe side. And so, Mm. um, we arranged a healing journey for January 28th of 2022 and which was my wife and I's 10 year wedding anniversary which again, Aww. no coincidences. So we weren't living in Calgary at this point, but we traveled back to Calgary and all of that spirituality and that energetic component to the healing that I'd been missing in all the traditional therapies was like, I was finally there. I was just, I was excited. And she, <laughs> I mean, there was drumming involved and calling in of protection and calling in of like angels and unicorns and fairies. And like, it was next level wild, the ceremony portion of the healing journey, which really resonated deeply with me. And mm-hmm. so I'd written out my intentions in my journal. And so with the medicine that I grew on a sacred geometry clearing plate and with Reiki and with all the intention that I talked about previously, I held that medicine to my heart and I stated and I read my intentions three times forcefully and then I consumed Mm -hmm. it. And what happened was it did exactly what I asked it to do. It, without resistance, without even thinking about it, I went back chronologically to the first trauma that went right back to the very beginning of my policing career in the RCMP. And Mm. I saw the situation. So this was the first time I ever let myself even like think about it for more than, you know, that two second period before I would just push something back down. So I went back there and I saw it from a different perspective. Number one was the biggest thing, one of my big takeaways. And that was uh, from a different perspective that I actually was a witness to someone else's trauma story and their, you know, just the end of, maybe decades or potentially even lifetimes of trauma and different things that had led them to the worst day of their life, right? Where it's just when the police get called. And for me, a lot of the the hard ones were suicide related. And so um, that was a a big takeaway for me that I was just holding on to this trauma that I was a witness to. And just this realization that it wasn't it wasn't helping anyone, certainly not the person involved in the situation and definitely not myself at this point. And so, and then the second part was this, what I can only describe as radical Jesus level compassion for Mm. the person involved. So for me being a lot of them being suicide related, like just this compassion of what their story must have looked like and what their traumas must have looked like to get them to that point. And I just, yeah, I had this overwhelming sense of compassion for them and what that must have looked like and what their life must have been like up until that point. And then also that same level of of compassion for myself in that I was just trying to help people at the end of the day. And of course that gets lost um, over the, you know, the course of a career and I got bitter and and jaded and all the things that, that happens to, I'm sure most police officers, but at the end of the day, that was my, that was my why. And so I had, yeah, those, those feelings and between those, you know, that different perspective and then that compassion, I was able to just process and just let go of this trauma and this, you know, narrative, I guess, that I built up in my head and it just released. And it was actually, I don't want to say it was an enjoyable experience, but it was almost enjoyable. Um, And that's what this medicine allowed me to do is just shift my state of consciousness to the point where I was open to going back to these really hard places and actually digging in and and dealing with unprocessed trauma. And that's what was affecting me in my day-to-day life and had affected my sleep and caused me to lose 25 plus pounds and caused me to not show up as the person I know I can be. And so I was able to do that in an afternoon and I would just go, I went from that first chronological trauma, hard call to the next one. And then work, work through it, that same process with, um, with each subsequent call right up until present day. And I came out of that room and it wasn't like a light switch, right? Like it had taken so long for, for everything to basically degenerate to that point that it took some time, some integration and um, some different 
you know, sessions with the, my psychologist after that, um, to get back to myself. But that day was a huge, huge turning point for me. So as I told you, I was severe PTSD going into that healing journey. About six weeks yeah. later, WCB had ordered a comprehensive psych assessment. So they had no idea what I had done, right? Like I had paid They for didn't this. know you were on magic mushrooms. No, the police no. officer on magic mushrooms. <laughs> no, they did not. <laughs> no. So I had to pay for it myself, had to organize it myself. It was it was something I knew I needed to do, but certainly not something that was supported by uh by my um, you know, caseworker or anything like that. So they had ordered this psych assessment and it was a half day, like there was a, an interview and all the standardized testing again. And then that psychologist who was completely independent again, she called me back a week later and let me know that I no longer even met the criteria for a diagnosis. So I went from wow. severe PTSD, one healing journey, six weeks later, I didn't meet the criteria for a diagnosis. So for me, the evidence is pretty clear. <laughs> Yes, that's incredible. And I know that that's what led you to then go and create flow state designs. But before we get to that, everyone talks about, let's say, childhood trauma. But do you know what we don't talk a lot about is adult trauma brought on by things like going to war, being a police officer, seeing things that are unfathomable to the average person. I cannot imagine, Nick, what you have seen, right? Like I cannot imagine stumbling on a gunshot victim. I cannot imagine stumbling on a suicide or a murder or anything like that. Like it's, I've seen it on TV and that's the only way that I have any way to relate to it. And it's still horrifying when I see it on TV. So I have no concept of what it's like to, as an adult, go through these things and have that PTSD. Can you talk a little bit about what were you seeing in terms of like your fellow officers and people that you know? Is PTSD just the norm? Is it only 50%? Is it a huge amount of people who are going through this? And then are you able to share that with other officers? Are they open and receptive to go, you know what? This magic mushroom journey transformed me overnight. Like, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. I And I don't, again, have the stats to, to back up what I'm saying here, but PTSD in, in different forms um, is really, really common in first responders and not just police officers, but we're talking, you know, paramedics and uh, firefighters right. as well, for sure. Because it's just, yeah, it's not natural. The things that you're seeing on a daily basis. And it's certainly getting better in terms of the supports and the different um, resources that are available to the, to the guys and girls out there. Mm -hmm. It's trending in the right direction, but it's still like the world is, is pretty chaotic right now. And yeah. when you're out uh, there on the street working, you're going from call to call to call to call. And there's no time for that like decompression or that debrief or anything like that. And then if it's not dealt with kind of right in the moment or shortly thereafter, it just ends up getting buried. And for yeah. me, it was, that was exactly the process, right? It just like, it was a, you know, like a, a suicide here. And then, you know, that bad car crash on over here. And then it just piled up over the years and got to the point where it just, it just overflowed my cup and everyone's cup is a different size, of course. And what, what affected me and what stuck with me wouldn't to the next guy or girl, but then something that, you know, wasn't a big deal for them would have been for me. If, if you know what I mean, it's, it's so individual and based on yeah. your, yeah, you know, how you were brought up and the different experiences you had as a child and like, there's so many different factors. Um, so yeah, it's, it's super common. And then I saw, a lot of, you know, behavior amongst my f coworkers, you know, numbing out with alcohol and a lot of police officers end up in divorce and a lot of guys will cheat on their wives and just do these really unhealthy things that are, in my opinion, a trauma response. And they're yeah, doing subconsciously or unconsciously. They're just trying to get through the day to day and, but they're carrying on or carrying all this unprocessed trauma. And I will say, and not just again, first responders, but I would say people in general, like 
unprocessed trauma is at the root cause of so much of the issues yeah. in our society and with people in general, like with yeah. their health. It's it's just super, super, yeah, it's a huge factor. And what I'm really called to do, and, and that's why I'm talking to you today, is to share my story, to give people um, basically the some hope that there is alternatives to decades of therapy that may or may not bring them back to themselves or they may or may not be able to actually process, you know, these, these traumas from childhood or into adulthood. And that in, with the right intention and the right mindset and the willingness to go in and do the work, you can heal decades worth of trauma in an afternoon with these medicines that are here to help us. And so I'm just, uh, yeah, super called to share my story of, um, you know, healing and let people know that it's a possibility for them too. This holiday season, give the gift of health with products that bring vitality to your loved one's lives every single day. First, check out Cure Nutrition's Rise. This is the morning companion your body craves. Rise and shine with natural energy, courtesy of the broad spectrum CBD, lion's mane, cordyceps, ginseng, and rhodiola, which are the main ingredients. Say goodbye to morning grogginess and hello to focus and productivity. It's vegan, it's gluten-free, it's the boost you need without the crash. Plus, it makes a great gift. I love getting gifts that'll make me healthier, that'll make me happier, that will make me more productive. So if you have someone in your life who's like me, this would make a great gift for them. Embrace the power of nature and CBD and visit curenutrition.com slash food heals to save 20% off. Another energy giving gift that you can sip on throughout your day, you can give to others is Organifi Red Juice. This is a caffeine free energy boost straight from nature. It's got red beet, cordyceps, and rhodiola. You can indulge in the sweet berry taste. It's high in antioxidants. It's got adaptogens. Those are the secret weapons that stabilize your energy and your mood and support your body's essential processes. With Organifi Red Juice, you'll experience sustained motivation without the jitter. So whether it's a pre-workout kick or it's a last minute rescue, this red juice is your go-to solution. You can also check out the Organifi Red travel packs. That means the energy goes with you wherever you go. That makes a great stocking stuffer as well for anyone on your list. Make your holidays vibrant. Visit OrganifiShop.com slash FoodHeals. Use the coupon code FoodHeals to save 20% off your order. You know, my whole show is food heals, heal yourself with nutrition, heal yourself with food, because that's how I learn to heal my body first. But what we can't discount is healing our traumas because so many diseases can be diseases of the mind, diseases that stem from trauma, diseases of what you called unprocessed trauma, because like you said, you did, we push it down. I know exactly what that's like, Nick. When I lost my parents, both of them, by the time I was 25, do you know what I did? As soon as I thought about it, I pushed it down and got a glass of wine because that's what we do to cope. And there's no judgment. It is what we know until we discover there could be something else. I remember discovering the food. I remember discovering the nutrition. I remember being like, I will never get cancer like my parents did because I will heal myself with nutrition. I will heal my physical body, but we can heal physically all we want. But if we're not healing mentally and emotionally, then we're not truly healing. So that's why I appreciate this conversation so much. And we know that people spend years and years and years and tons of money in therapist's office. And I'm all for therapy. Absolutely. But what if there was a shortcut? What if there was a way to tackle these things more quickly and talking to you and talking to friends of mine and talking to other people on the Food Heals podcast who have been able 
to transform things in their lives, like you said, overnight in a short period of time that they were never able to do with other healing tools, whether it was therapy or nutrition, that tells me we're on to something here. So we're talking about psilocybin, magic mushrooms today. I've heard it with ayahuasca. I've heard it with MDMA. I've heard it with all of these natural plant-based psychedelics is what we're talking about here. And it's it's rare to hear a cop talk about this. So thank you. You are here and you're like, all right, I'm healing my trauma. I did this overnight. Is this a healing journey? So like in nutrition, we have to choose to eat well, you know, 80 to 90% of the time to maintain our health physically and work out and all those things. Is something like magic mushrooms, is this something that we have to do regularly or is this something we do three times and the healing is 10x? Like talk to me a little bit about the process Um, because I know you said in one day you healed 15 years of trauma. That's incredible. Clinically diagnosed with severe PTSD to no longer meeting the criteria for diagnosis. This is incredible. So talk to me a little bit about, okay, after that one experience, what happens? Are we on maintenance? Do we have to do this all the time? Talk to me about that. Yeah. So it's an individual thing for sure. And I will say that uh, having talked to different practitioners since that, that are in the psychedelic space, my story of being able to heal that you know, that amount of trauma in one session is quite unusual and rare. Um, Mm -hmm. But I will say that for me, I believe that it was my, my just complete openness and willingness to like go in and do that work. So that was a huge component. And then I were ready. I was super ready. ready to heal. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. And then also I I think that there was a huge component in how the mushrooms themselves were growing and the energy that I put into them. And I, I can't explain it, but there's something there as well. So, um, so so for me, it was one time and yeah, I I went from, you know, diagnosis to no diagnosis and then Mm -hmm. post journey, like, again, it wasn't like a switch flipped. And I still, to this day, I mean, that was, you know, a year, a little bit over a year and a half ago. And like, there's still work to be done. Of course there always will be. Right. But, um, I haven't, no, I haven't done any subsequent healing journeys, like specifically for this trauma, um, because I was able to process it in that first journey. So I have wow. done, uh, I have done another psilocybin healing journey, I'll call it, but I, and I went in with, with the intention to just sort of, you know, clear anything that needed to be cleared at that point. And my experience was wildly different than that first time. And it was all very positive, but it was, yeah, very different. And I feel like those, those traumas, like I was able to move them and I was able to just get them out of my body. And I'll just touch on one more thing here. And that was that I always thought that trauma, because it was a memory would live in your mind. Right. But that's yeah, mm-hmm. not the case at all. It, uh, it lives in your body and your tissues and yeah. your organs. And that's where the root cause of, of disease comes from, in my opinion, one of the major root causes. And so, um, I was able to just move that. And so I, yeah, I haven't had to do any sort of maintenance with the, those specific traumas. I mean, again, the self-work will always continue and there's always room for improvement there. But um, as far as the traumas go, it's it was kind of a one and done thing for me. Damn, that's amazing. I feel like I just want everyone to rewind and listen to that again to know that a healing miracle is always possible and it can happen quickly. It doesn't have to take months or years of your life. And I just want to impart that wisdom that Obviously, like you said, Nick, everyone's experience is different. Everyone's traumas are multifactorial and we can't guarantee this will happen for you. But why not see if this is a healing tool to add to your healing toolbox? And so I really want to get into um, how you figured out that you wanted to found your company, Flow State Design. But last question before we go there is essentially... If someone is listening to this right now and they're like, all right, you know what, Allie and Nick, I'm sold, but I don't know how to grow mushrooms. Is this legal? Like, what am I supposed to do here? I don't know a drug dealer. This is me. Like, I am 
Little Miss Good Girl, everyone knows it. Like, I never saw drugs in high school. I never saw drugs in college. I think there was a few people that hid them from me, but like, I'm Little Miss Innocent. I don't got anyone on speed dial that I can call. I have friends who have had an ayahuasca experience or a mushroom journey or whatever, but they've done them at in Peru or in like in Malibu at these like experience centers. So if you're just like, all right, I want to figure out how I can do this for myself, have this experience. What, how do we start, Nick? What do you recommend? You grow them at your house. Like, is that something anyone can do? Yes. Um, and with the caveat that it, it is still a controlled substance. And so it is okay. still illegal and it depends on, on what state you're in or what province or country, of course. Um, but yeah. yeah, in Canada, so psilocybin is still a schedule one drug, which the definition of a schedule one drug is high likelihood of addiction and no medical therapeutic benefit, which is just wrong. Of course. like We know that's bullshit. I'm right. going to say it right now. You don't have to. We know that that is bullshit because SSRIs, which are drugs by the pharmaceutical companies are highly addictive, have massive side effects, literally make people kill other people. You know, it just depends on not, obviously that doesn't happen to everyone, but we know that the side effects of these drugs are massively scarier and worse than the side effects of any type of natural substance from the earth. So I, sorry, sidebar, but I just want to say, we know that's bullshit. I'm saying it so you don't have to. Perfect. No. And you're, yeah, you're, you're singing my, singing my tune here for sure. And it's <laughs> like, because there's no, there's no money in it. At the end of the day, there's no money right. in psilocybin for big pharma. And so that's Not yet. There why... probably will be one day, Nick, right? One day. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, they're, they're trying come. <laughs> to, you know, you know, synthesize a, an analog that won't have any side effects. And they're trying to like take out the psychedelic part of it. And it's like, come on, like it's nature. Like, let's just leave nature alone. Nature knows what's up. But anyways, let nature story. do its thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yes. So that caveat being given, um, there are ways to, to get, like, I just ordered it online. I ordered the kit off the internet and it, just got yeah. delivered right to my door. So it would vary, of course, on where you're geographically located. Um, and then also there's these healing centers are popping up all over um, the, well, North America for sure that I'm aware of. And so I would just start with a Google search on, you know, shaman healing or shaman psychologist or plant medicine journey practitioner or something along those lines and just kind of see what comes up for you. And then there's probably, well, not probably, there definitely is, you know, some really good ones out there and there's probably some maybe not so good ones. And so, um, it's kind of the wild west right now in terms of what, what's available. And we're at a time where psilocybin. So when I was in still in policing, cannabis was sort of at the end of uh, it's time being illegal in Canada. And so for about, it was about five or six years, I would say before it became legal in Canada, there was just no investigational appetite at all to investigate cannabis related crimes like grow operations or whatever else, because the writing was on the wall that it was going to become legal. And so I feel that same sense with psilocybin right now is that while still a control controlled substance and schedule one and all the things there's really no investigational appetite or budget to go into investigating it. And so that's why you're seeing all this stuff pop up on the internet and whatnot. And so, um, yeah, I don't have any like hard, you know, go to this place and this resource. And there are some really good organizations out there. Like maps is a really good one for people to check out. Um, and I'm sure there's other ones as well, but, um, yeah, I would just say do some research and see what, what, speaks to you and then just let your intuition guide you. And if it feels shady, then don't do it. And if yeah. you feel called and you, you think that this person or place or the, the, it's the right circumstance for you, then uh, just trust that. All right. So let me ask you one more question as a former police officer, you, you kind of just said it, but like, no one's coming after us for the magic mushrooms. Like they have police officers have better things to do unless you're acting a fool and drinking and driving. Like they're not coming after you. And so 
let's say we were doing a ceremony at our home or something very safe, no one's driving, no nothing, and a police officer came to our door, what are our rights and what should we do if something like that happened? Because I know you guys are so busy. You don't want to deal with something so simple, but at the same time, there are a lot of us who would live in fear of police when um, there are something considered illegal involved, even though we said it's plant-based medicine. What are our rights and what should we say if something were to happen? Yeah. So the part that's illegal of psilocybin is the possession of it okay. or the cultivation of it. So okay. for the possession, that's like, it's physically, you know, in your pocket or in your car, like close to where you can access it. And so once you've consumed it, of course, you're no longer in possession of it. <laughs> so there's that, there's <laughs> so that. Take portion. the drugs. <laughs> <laughs> so that, I'm not, that wouldn't be my advice. That, that came out a little wrong, but um, so if Sorry, you're, I'm, we're joking, we're joking, <laughs> Food Heals Nation. That's a joke. Go on. <laughs> so if you're in a situation where you know you're in a ceremony and and you've already consumed the mushrooms, then you you're not actually committing an offense at that point. So, okay. uh, but the the cultivation, of course, if you were growing them still in your house, then then of course that that would still be illegal. And so a police officer can't come into your house and search your house for anything unless they have well grounds to do that and what that looks like is a search warrant and so if there is no search warrant you don't have to you don't have to consent to a search they might ask you if if they're you know allowed to come in or anything like that but you are under no obligation to to agree to that um so mm -hmm. yeah that would be Kind of my advice, and and this, uh, this this is kind of like worst case scenario. This is like I've been around the psychedelic space here for a little bit and talked to quite a bit of people, and I've never heard of of anything going awry with police involvement at this point. And so it's not something that I would I would worry about, to be honest with you. I wouldn't either. I think it's rare, but I feel like my responsibility is to ask, especially because you actually have more knowledge than most other people because of your background. So thank you for sharing that. And so here you are and you you left you know, your career and you healed or you're in the healing process of healing from that PTSD of what you saw and you're in a meditation and you had the vision of flow state designs. Talk to me a little bit about that vision that you had and how you then translated it to make this organic hemp clothing that is good for us, good for the earth, good for our bodies. Like we know that all these toxins in our clothes, they've talked about Shein, which is the cheap clothing brand on Instagram for, um, and it's cute. Don't get me wrong, but they've said like, Hey, they have terrible practices like slave labor practices in China. Their clothing has carcinogens in the in the cloth that's then going to get into our bloodstream because anything that we put on our body immediately hits the bloodstream, right? Like anything that hits our skin, I mean. So talk to me about your vision for this, what you saw, how you created it, and why it's important. Yeah, no, that's a great question. So I was, I couldn't find what I ended up creating in the market. And again, just to reiterate, so something that was locally made, something that yeah. was made with natural fiber and something that just looked and fit right. And so yeah. I, I had in my head, I knew what that was going to look and feel like, like, and the energy of it too. And that's, that's a huge part is the intention. So I talk about intention with psychedelics and healing and my intention with clothing with the clothing brand that I've since been able to uh to bring to the world my intention yeah. was to to do the exact opposite of what we're seeing from companies like Shein and that's fast fashion yeah. right and what yeah. I'm doing is very much on the opposite end of that spectrum and and very much slow fashion so it took me 
two and a half years to get from that meditation to the point where I had a physical product that I was happy with and ready to put out to the market. And so okay. I'm a really like attention to detail kind of guy, which served me in, you know, in my investigative career with policing and is also serving me with my attention to detail, bringing a product to market. And so my, everything that I've put into this is like, is to get the best possible product that's the best for you as the wearer. So in terms of the health of the the fibers that we're using and also the energy of where the clothing is sewn and where it's being, you know, coming from the fabric itself. And, and all of that is, is very much top of mind. And then not only is it good for you, but it's better for the planet as well. So hemp is it's a, an amazing plant and so many uses uh, from, yeah. you know, food, of course, to fibers, to you can use it to make hemp based plastics and you can use it in, you can mix it in a, con- it's not concrete, but it's, they call it hemp crete. And so in uh, construction, like, and I'm just naming just a couple off the top of my head, there's hundreds and hundreds of uses for it. And it's the way it grows. It, it has a really deep root system that breaks up soil. And so it actually, it regenerates the soil and puts nutrients back into it when used as a rotational crop and it doesn't need as much water as cotton and it doesn't need all the pesticides and all the other things that um, other fibers do and so that was all very important to me so not only is it yeah, better for the person wearing it at the end of the day but it's also better for the planet and I I always say look good feel good do good and so that's sort of my yeah. motto is like when you look good you feel good and then you're able to do good in the world. And so that's the energy I put into the clothing. And then to even take it one step further, I have had a a small piece of clear quartz crystal sewn into the care and content label of every shirt. And I've sent that crystal, the energy of grace and abundance and flow and gratitude and uh, a bunch of energies along those lines, and then had that sewn into the clothing. So while you're wearing one of our items, you're also carrying that energy with it in addition to the positive energy of how it was made and where it was made and all the things like that. So very intentional clothing. That is incredible. I love that. What a beautiful add on to the clothes that we're buying. And it looks everything on the website at flowstatedesigns.ca looks so soft and so beautiful. And you plan a tree for every purchase. Now, I would lo- love to know how you verify that every tree is planted. Cause like I've talked to people about this and they're like, I don't know. They say they do this. How do we really know? But you know, on your website, it says how you mitigate your am- impact by planting a mangrove tree with every order. And I know it would be impossible as the business owner to go plant each tree yourself. So how do you um, find someone to do that? Like if someone's starting a business and they're like, I want to plant a tree for every purchase, how do you verify that? How do you find somebody to do that? Yeah. So we've partnered with a company that's out of the States. They're called EcoDrive. And so Mm -hmm. that's their business is doing the tree planting and then the verification side of it. So it, I don't know all the, like the tech side of it, but there's like blockchain involved and whatnot. And so you can actually, yeah, go and verify that a tree has been planted for every order that goes through. And so, um, yeah, it's a, again, it's called eco drive. And so as a business owner, you just yeah reach out to them and, um, set up a meeting and you can, set up the software to run on your website and it's all kind of done for you in the back end. And then with every purchase, it's just, um, you got to just pay them for the, the tree that's planted is basically how it works. Yeah. I think, um, a lot of companies talk a big game and it's only because I personally have the, I don't know, advantage. I have the luckiness. <laughs> I have the Um, I'm so grateful that I have this podcast to interview people like you so that I know that a company is actually doing what they say they're doing because there's so many companies that aren't, but you have 
this story behind it. You have this passion. You have a mission to make a difference. And that's why companies like yours, Flow State Designs, are different. And so thank you so much. Everything is over at flowstatedesigns.ca. You're also on Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, Instagram. What are we going to find when we go to some of these uh, social media channels? What What's some of the content that you've been creating? So I'm getting real personal, actually. So I started out yeah. <laughs> as just, you know, farming out my social media to like a third party and it was very in, impersonal and that wasn't working for me at all. And so I've transitioned here recently to just telling my story actually is the majority of the content is me just going through my life up until this point and what what has led me to be at this position in terms of my career and moving away from policing and now into clothing. And um, I'm now really called to, in addition to sharing my story, but to even get into healing modalities. And so uh, my wife and I are starting a, uh, a breathwork uh, practice and it's nine, it's called 9D. So there you wear a headset and you can go in with a, it's an eye mask and there's nine levels to the audio and there's binaural beats and there's a bunch of really cool things that happen and you can heal all sorts of things, generational trauma and a, a bunch of really, really funky things. Um, and then in addition to that, I'm, uh, I'm, I've started shaman training myself. And so I am hoping to someday be able to facilitate healing for, for other people. And so, yeah, that's, that's what you're going to find on social media. And it's just me, uh, being real is basically what you're going to see there. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's so cool. And I love what you're doing. And I love that wh where your background, where you're coming from can help a lot of people transition and understand like, it's okay to go from one career to another. It's okay to heal your trauma in unconventional ways. And gosh, how quickly it can happen and how amazingly it can inform the mission that you have today. So again, it's all over at flowstatedesigns.ca. Nick, where can everyone follow you, find you, stalk you? What's your favorite social media channel that you want to make sure that they follow? <laughs> I would say uh, Instagram and TikTok are kind of my, my top two for sure. Okay, got it. it. TikTok at Flow State Designs, Instagram at Nick M O T Y C K A dot Flow dot State dot Designs. All right, thank you so much, Nick. I really appreciate you. And um, oh yeah, that's it. All right, Nick. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here today. Thank you very much for having me and giving me the opportunity to share my story. And I hope uh, that your listeners can can gain something and, and have some, some hope moving forward if they're dealing with trauma. So thanks again. Food Heals Nation, did you know that Americans spend an average of 90% of their time indoors and take about 20,000 breaths per day? According to the EPA, indoor air is two to five times more polluted than outdoor air, and in some cases, this is scary, up to 100 times more polluted. The data shows that air pollution is responsible for nearly 7 million premature deaths globally. That's why it's so important to filter the air in our homes. You remember my story after discovering toxic mold in my home almost a year ago, I realized the importance of having multiple high quality air filters in my home to protect myself, to protect the air that I'm breathing and the air that my beagle Lily is breathing. Think about everyone in your household, your family members, your roommates, your kids, your cats, your dogs, your pets right? We have to be so conscious of the air that we're breathing inside. But that's why I'm obsessed with Air Doctor. You can visit airdoctorpro.com, use the code FOODHEALS, and you can get up to 39% off an air purifier. 
Air Doctor filters out 99.99% of dangerous contaminants and allergens like pollen and pet dander and dust mites and mold and even bacteria and viruses so your lungs don't have to. It's so easy to set up, it's quiet, and I can rest easy knowing I'm breathing cleaner air every day when I'm working from home. If you work from home like me, you've got to filter your air. So head on over to airdoctorpro.com, use the promo code FOODHEALS, and depending on the model you pick, you'll receive up to 39% off or up to $300 off. This is exclusive to Food Heals Nation listeners. You'll also receive a free three-year warranty on any unit, which is an additional $84 value. Check it out by going to A-I-R-D-O-C-T-O-R-P-R-O.com, airdoctorpro.com, and use promo code FOODHEALS. When Luca's mom was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, she ran from doctor's office to doctor's office, getting more and more prescription medicine while her health just got worse, which is exactly what happened to my mom when she first had multiple sclerosis followed by cancer. Every pill introduced a new side effect and every side effect warranted a new pill. It was a vicious cycle with no healing in sight. In Luca's case, his mom found a different route. She found a doctor who specialized in root cause medicine. After 12 months, she completely reversed her autoimmune condition. And her son Luca began to think, why isn't all of medicine this personalized and data driven? And why doesn't everyone have access to this type of information? And that's when he created Index Health. Stories like these remind me of why I do this show, Food Heals Nation, and why I love Index Health, which you can learn more about at indexclinic.com slash foodheals. With Index Health, you get access to board-certified functional medicine trained doctors and functional trained nutritionists who use advanced lab tests to diagnose and treat chronic conditions. All treatment plans are 100% personalized, and doctor appointments are one hour long. They really take the time to deep dive into their patient's health. I only wish that something like Index Health was around when my mom was sick. To schedule your first appointment, visit indexclinic.com slash foodheals. Again, that's indexclinic.com slash foodheals. Food Heals Nation, if you're like me, you know that drinking enough water is imperative for our hydration and our detox. And I personally try to drink half my body weight in ounces of water per day. But have you thought about the quality of water that you are drinking? So according to the Environmental Working Group, virtually every home in the U.S. has harmful contaminants in its tap water. So ditch the tap water, ditch the cheap water filters, and check out my favorite water purifier company, AquaTrue. You can visit AquaTrue.com, use the coupon code FOODHEALS for 20% off any AquaTrue purifier. AquaTrue purifiers use a four-stage reverse osmosis purification process, and their countertop purifiers work with no insulation, no plumbing. I set it up myself, don't worry, it's easy. It removes 15 times more contaminants than ordinary pitcher filters and are specifically designed to combat chemicals like PFAs in our water supply. The filters are affordable and long lasting, no changing filters every two to three months. AquaTrue filters last from six months up to two years. AquaTrue comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee and even makes a great gift. Today, my listeners will receive 20% off any AquaTrue purifier. Just go to AquaTrue.com, that's A-Q-U-A-T-R-U.com, and enter the code FOODHEALS at checkout. That's 20% off any AquaTrue water purifier when you go to AquaTrue.com and use code FOODHEALS. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to actually start using their $39.99 a month gym membership. If you experience any of these symptoms, Snapchat your trainer immediately. (laughs) 